hands off our good old Kevin Smith. Cheese and Mule! Hey! Cheese and Mule! Hey! Uh, we are in Dallas, man, at the Fan Expo. Put your hands together so the folks at home know you were real. First off, it's not videotape, it's a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's been videotaped since the fucking early 90s. Come on, let me stick with the old school. No, <laughs> drag your ass into the fucking future. <laughs> I was so getting present. the fucking, uh, what's it, eight, the old, uh, eight, eight, Super eight? Super eight, yeah, super eight <laughs> and shit. Um, but no, when I was recording him on my iPhone, there you go. Uh, I get distracted because I'll try to get his face and get his laugh. Um, so I never get his toes because I'm always like, ooh. <laughs> I get all excited because he goes, hey, hey, hey. 
It's funny. It's amazing. Do you feel like you failed in not getting his toes? No, not at all. Because I think it, when, I, when I actually grab his toes, he's like, <laughs> He got my fucking toes! <laughs> what is it like? <coughs> you've been a, a parent to a daughter for a long time. What's it like having a boy? I really find myself just constantly, every time I change his diaper, being like, I hope he has a really big dick when he's old. <laughs> what every father wishes for his son. I wish you a big dick in life. Uh, no, it's awesome. It's, it's too early. I feel like it's too early to tell. Um, <laughs> that too. The penis thing is too early to tell. But I feel like there's, there's no difference, I feel like, at this point, except for, like, the difference in his, uh, his temperament compared to Logan. I feel like Logan used to cry a lot more. It was a lot more, she was fussier. He like <laughs> you would stare at her and be like, I hope she gets a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I try to, now she gets really pissed. I used to joke. Now about you're like, I hope she gets no dick ever. <laughs> True. But I always say to her, I'll be like, I'll be like, yo, I'll be like, you gotta take a bath. She'll be like, can you give me a bath? I'll be like, I don't know if I'm ready to wash that penis today again. She's like, I don't have a penis. <laughs> she said they was funny, but not anymore. She's like, I don't have a penis, motherfucker. All right. <laughs> She says that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's so funny. Um, but but no, I feel like just she used to bust a lot more. He seriously, you know, that we've gotten lucky. He just he barely cries except for when he's hungry um, or if he has a wet diaper. Um, he or might, he realizes who his father is. Yeah, right. unless he realizes like, man, I don't think I'll have a big dick. <laughs> Don't cry, son. It's early to tell. <laughs> um, we, we, we really fought. We really had trouble debating on if we should get him circumcised or not. And and I realized, like, really? Yeah, because I, well, because Jordan was like, I'm not sure if we should. I'm like, well, I feel like you should. I, I did. And we I came did. up in a generation where there was no discussion. They just cut your dick right away. And, stuff. <laughs> and it wasn't even for religious reasons. Yeah. It was just like, fucking make it look normal. Uh, how many, I mean, this is a weird poll, but how many dudes in the audience are uncut? Put your hands together. I'm not turning around. A problem right there. Like a loud fucking clap, and god damn it, they didn't touch my dick. I got all that force. How many people are cut? Put your hands together. This is predominantly still, I mean, our audience tends to be as old as we are and shit, but um, predominantly. Here's a question. If, if you, the two people or three that got sprays their hands, would you get it cut right now if you could and it didn't hurt? This late in life, you want to fucking go under the knife with your dick? No, No. Is it thicker when it pulls back? No, I'm just kidding. My father uh, had an uncut cock, man. Growing up, I, you know, my parents were, uh, I wouldn't call them nudists, but they didn't shy away from sleeping in the nude, so if they got up to go to the bathroom, you always fucking like saw all their business and shit. So my father, wasn't a, he wasn't a huge man, he didn't have like a fucking baby elephant in there. Fucking drunk, but whenever I saw a dick that wasn't mine when I was a kid, it was his, which sounds fucking sus, but it wasn't, it was nothing bad. But when I saw it, I think today. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck, Dad? I wish it was good. Uh, but I would see it, and it was like uncut, and it just happened. Yeah. It happened to fuck. Well, I never saw it get hard, thank Christ. But I saw it sheathed up and stuff, and I was not like, that's not looking at it, Jordan. That's so weird. And then uh, my mom told me, she's like, that, that's a relatively new thing. Like, uh, Dude, don't leave. I swear we'll stop talking about dicks. <laughs> she's like, I didn't pay for this shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, it's, uh, so what, you're gonna, when are you gonna make the decision? When are you waiting? No, we already did. 18? No, no, we cut him. We cut him. We cut it right away, but I didn't want to wait. If we were gonna do it, I didn't want to wait until it would hurt. I'm just saying. Dude, so like, where's your toes? Where's your dick? <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. I had to leave. I wanted to leave. Like, he wanted me to watch the doctor, but they literally... Oh, hey, really? The doctor's like, watch this shit. <laughs> well, I, Don't you like that? Look at that. No, dude, but it's horrible. Dirty dude. fucking cock, look at this. <laughs> they strap him to this table, and like this. Like, literally, it's like this little... Like fucking Frankenstein? I can't be, dude, it was scary. I wish, I hope this yeah, doesn't break nice. off me. But he was like this, strapped him. <laughs> and you let that shit happen? What kind of fucking father are you? You should have grabbed him and ran. Get off the dog. <laughs> I'm running through the hospital. I gotta protect this dick. It was, it was, it's a weird
weird. It's such a weird conversation, but it really was something we thought about and thought about, like talks. She said, "When you say we, you mean you and my wife and I?" We were like, "What should we do?" And I was like, "Well, listen, we not you and the kid." You're like, "What do you think? Should we do this?" He's like, "No, but I started." Stop taking my toes. I started asking her friends. We went to a wedding, and I started asking friends at the table that I never met. You're like, "Hey, everybody, should I cut my kid's dick or what?" I did. I did though, and I was like, what do you guys think? Are you circumcised? And everyone at the table was, except for one guy. They're like, I think that maybe you Always should not talk no. about this at a wedding. No, Jordan, Jordan got upset that I started talking about it at the table. Why? She said, don't ask my friend. Because she thought it was a weird conversation piece for a wedding. What know? a shock, because it is a fucking weird conversation for a wedding. Why did put a list somewhere? Yeah, truly, man. I was just trying to get advice. I was trying to get, like, Growing up, we had to take showers. You got in trouble in gym class if you didn't shower. You get marked for it. That's like, true. Lower grades. Out of like 40 kids in my classroom that we took showers with, one kid had uh, an ant eater, as I call it. Right? <laughs> and and so I told her that I said, look, growing up it just seemed normal to be cut. And I said, but I don't know now. Like, is it wrong? Because it seems like you're butchering the poor baby, especially when I saw him strapped on the fucking table. Yeah. I was waiting for him to start getting horses and start pulling them fucking apart. <laughs> <laughs> Draw and quarter them yeah, on the exactly. Phone. I was like, what are you going to do? So, but anyway, we wound up getting it done. But now, and then you have to sit and like stretch his dick for like weeks after and shit. Because if not... I don't think that's true. I think someone's playing a prank on me. <laughs> the doctor's like, yeah, he got to jerk his dick. I told him he's got to jerk his kid's dick. A month later, he's zooming it with all the nurses. He's like, remember that stupid motherfucker news? I bet he's pulling on his son's dick right now. <laughs> but you do, because if not, it starts to go back up and starts to heal. It makes around. another one and yeah. fucking wants to go back to being the anti Yeah, and then it like seals around it, and then he fucking has nowhere to piss because it grows around it and shit, and you gotta get a, a little knife and cut a hole in it. <laughs> Why does he know so much about this shit? So my man over there, don't get cut, obviously. <laughs> like, good advice right here. Wow, that's nuts. <laughs> We're not nuts. <laughs> He's got a nice set of nuts, too, on him. <laughs> anyway. I don't think uh, you ever refer to your own child's nuts as a nice set of nuts. <laughs> He's got a nice three-piece set and shit. I'll, like, have him. I'll take him. I'll, like, stand up. So let me see that three-piece. I'm, like, nice job. Man. Meat and potato. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, it's been awesome. He's been awesome. The only difference I realized having his son is the temperament, but also he pissed in my face like three times. <laughs> <laughs> you hear stories about I that. I pissed in your face if you strap me down and cut my dick as well. For the rest of your life, I'd be like, fuck. <laughs> well, it's funny because you hear stories and you think it's almost like, oh, come on. But I'll ch like, change his wet diaper and then I'll wipe him down with a baby wipe and the cold wipe and shit. And then all of a sudden I'll put the new diaper on him and I'll go to fold it over and I'll sit up like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck, you know? And then he'll shit sometimes, and he'll start shitting while I'll put the diaper on him. And then I'll like get it all wiped up and put it in the diaper fucking bin, and I'll turn around and he'll be shitting more. I'm like, oh no! Um, it's, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. <laughs> and I love poopies, cockies, fuckies, suckies. Smoochies and boochies. Oh my god, that was a two-handed fucking... Whose dick is that? His sons. Uh, we are joined, of course, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by uh, a uh, sign language speaker. What's your name? We, got, we should give him your name. You're part of the show, too. Uh, we have three interpreters. I'm Lael. Lael. Give it up for Lael. <laughs> Where's the other two? Okay, okay. So what, when she taps out, that's when you rush up and shit like that? How long do you go for? <laughs> oh. What, what, is it because it gets tiring? It's very tiring. Yes. It is, huh? I bet. Let me see. <laughs> it does, it does. Fucking, this guy's just going like this, and he's like, yeah, it's tiring. I remember going to say thank you to someone once. I went to What's your name? What's your name? My name is Jennifer. Give it up for Jennifer. She's just <laughs> that um, It's an art, you know, I, well, it's a language, really. But it's, a, it's an art to be able to do that and shit for just a normal conversation, but my god. To do it for all this fucking circumcision talk. Like, is that circumcision? Is this? 
Oh shit, you're just making that up right now. It's like you're popping that open like a beer, man. Wow, and so they taught you the word for circumcision? How about for That's like one of the words they teach you? Like, they're like, they're like they're fucking, here are the 500 terms you'll always use. One of them is fucking... Normally, like, what happens if you get a word that, like, you don't use? That's when you spell it out, right? You do all the letters? Yeah. How about for vagina? Well, that just makes sense. Yeah. 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 The, the side interpreters don't know if they should answer or not, because they're doing their job. Yeah. Oh shit! Seriously, are you sure that's not instructional? Like that's what you're supposed to do with it. Uh, well, how about all right? So here's one they probably didn't teach you. What about cock knocker? That's when you spell it, right? Look at that fire hose you were holding. <laughs> You gotta be a speller, right? There's a lot of letters in that. You might have to tap out for the third person. <laughs> well, we thank you, Jenny. For yes, looking. thank you guys. Yeah, man, give it up. Give it up. Uh, it's a hard job. <laughs> Toughest job we'll ever love. Um, is it tough being away from your... Uh, it, it's always tough for you to be away from Logan. Uh, is it tough to be away from both kids now? And how do you balance that? Like, do you... Now, I remember... For years, this motherfucker was like, I could never have another baby. And I was like, what are you, infertile? And he said, no, it's just, I would never know how to split the love. I could never love anyone as much as I love Logan. And having two, one of them would suffer and shit. Is one of them suffering now? Is one of them loved less than the other? They're not here, so you can be honest. <laughs> and also, one's a baby, so you can say him and he wouldn't even know well, it. You no, know, I, I would say that I do feel that I've paid more attention I feel like right now, I think it's going to be harder later. Right now, it's been okay because the wife does a lot of like feeding and then burping and then changing his diaper, putting him down for a nap. And then I'll drive Logan. You're together. the one that does all the obsessing about his cock. That's really <laughs> and I'll come and I'll hang out with him for like an hour, give her a break, and take him for a walk. I love carrying him around in a little jammy thing. I forget what they're called, but. I'll walk him around and that. Yeah, like a baby mule. Yeah, yeah. So when Logan's at school, I'll hang out for a couple hours, give her a break, and then I'll go get Logan. And but when Logan's home, but it's I'm with her nine, nine out of nine out of the ten hours. Let's say we're together. Because if I'm with him, she'll be like run in the room. She'll be like, can you put the baby down and come spend time with me? And I'm like, Logan, I just spent four hours with you. We went to the park. We went to dinner. You know, and I'll bring her to to the mall, whatever, and I'll go do stuff. But she does not want me away from her. Unless she's like participating. Yeah, yeah. She jealous. does, unless she's participating. If I'm holding the baby and I'm like, Logan, can you go grab a new outfit for him and go get a, uh, you know, a burp cloth. She'll go get it, come back, and she'll be like, let me help out. And then she'll be like, let me hold him and then I'll give her to him. But I guess, yes, it, it, Jordan, every once in a while, will be like, why don't you come over and hold your son already? You know what I mean? Cause, oh, like, yeah. plays it on thick? Like, I've been holding this baby forever. Should yeah, because I'll, like, be with Logan for hours, get her to school, come back, and when I get back, I'm like, I'm gonna go drop a deuce and shit in the toilet. You know what I mean? Then I'll go play. Too busy shitting to play with my son. <laughs> I believe like, there's a Harry Chapin Carpenter song about that. <laughs> and then I'll want to go play some Fortnite, you know? And just be like, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Is there a sign for Fortnite, or do you have to spell it? Just spell it out. Yeah, I love it. That's why. That's why you looked. You were studying. I was. I wanted to see so much. When I'm when I'm streaming on Twitch, I could be like. <laughs> You'd be like Fortnite. <laughs> You're like that's the sign for circumcision. You're like whatever. <laughs> so, but but uh, you know, and then she'll come in and be like. Or she does this. She likes to really, if she doesn't want me to be like, well, give me a second, you know? She's like, want to go with your son? She knows she's busting my like, want to go with your son, motherfucker. So she'll do this, she'll go back, don't you, dad? Lucy wants daddy. Lucy wants the daddy to Does hold she him. always yeah. say the full name, Luce, Lucien? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call him Luce or something like yeah, that? Yeah, no, Lucien right now. What, what yeah. do you, uh, that's her rules. What do you, when she's not around, when your wife's not around, to fucking like tell you how to live I'm your like, life. yo, a big dick news. <laughs> <laughs> Big Dick Muse with a nice three-piece set. Come here, boy. It's a rather long name. Lucian is much shorter. Than <laughs> no, I call him Lucian right now. It's funny because recently Jordan's like, do you think Lucian was a good name? Do you think we should have went with... She really was thinking Roman or Lucian. We were going back and forth. I wanted Magnus. 
I thought Magnus would have been dope, yeah. right? Magnus Hughes is yeah. a yeah. That's yeah. a born superhero or supervillain, right? Now. Right, I'm telling you. I like Lucy. <laughs> 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 You're listening too much to this dick talk, man. I just brought the pizza. I'm Magnus. <laughs> 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 First off, I don't think he'd use his real name in the story. <laughs> You probably have a character name. <laughs> but that gets to you, your real name is your character name, so yeah, it can yes, work for your yeah. kid as well. Yeah, especially when he's doing fucking pizza porn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but it's the only kind of porn there is. But I, I like Lucy, and, it, and again, it sticks with that Logan Lee Muse, Lucy and Lee Muse, so that oh no. Lee's the middle name because it's... For both the kids. Both kids, because Jordan's middle name's Lee, her mom's name, her grandmother, and her great-great-grandmother. So middle, middle name's middle Lee, name. it's sort of like tradition now. Um, so Way yeah. to pass on that trauma. Yeah, you know, and I'm... <laughs> it's so funny, she got so bummed the other day, she's like, you know, she's like, are you happy we have a boy? I'm like, well, yeah. I was like, I'm really happy now, because we know the muse fucking Janet will... The name will go on. Yeah. And I was like, so mom, or even if I'm gone in five years, she's like, wait, what? You think you're going to die in five years? And you're like, I am 49. <laughs> I, was like, I mean, I hope not, you know? I hope I make it Jordan to is like 92, is 96. Is substantially younger than you. How old is she? 13 years. So she just turned. <laughs> she's not 13 years old. She is 13 years younger. Yeah, I paused. 13 years younger. She's 36. <laughs> <laughs> Between all the talk about a baby's dick and the 13-year-old bride, they're gonna run us out of Texas on a ramp. He's 36, yeah. So what a burger, what a pedo, they're gonna say. <laughs> no, I started to say it, and then you finished your sentence, and I was like, oh, I mean. Um, um, but yeah, so she's younger. Right? She's very good, she's all, uh, Jordan runs our company, and so oddly enough, like, I talk to Jordan more than I talk to Jason. This is the most I've spoken to Jason in fucking weeks because yeah. he's so busy staring at his kid's dick. And, uh, so Jordan I talk to like literally every day. And so generally we talk about the business and fucking and making movies and shit like that. But periodically we get real and shit. And she got real at one point where she's just like, he's got to start taking better care of himself. And I was like, Jason? She said, yeah. I said, why? And she's gone because he's an old fucking man. <laughs> and she's like, she's seriously concerned that like, she's like, I don't want to have to take care of him when I'm 40. <laughs> she's like, I don't want to take care of his old fucking dick and shit. <laughs> um, no, she does get worried. She gets worried about how I eat and live and stuff at my age. And I get it. I get it. And I get it. It's, it's funny because the way she, she asks me or talks to me about stuff, I feel like it's her busting my chops. But in the end, I know it's because she's concerned. She's but, yeah. genuinely concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, she doesn't want to fucking raise children by herself. No, it makes sense. And I, Who will talk about the baby's dick if you're dead? Yeah, exactly. I want to at least see, I want to see him like... Stop up. right there. <laughs> I just want to see his dick get big. It's all I dream about. I just want to... <laughs> we should move on. <laughs> Welcome to Jam Bob Get Old. <laughs> um, you had a baby since the last time we did the show. I went crazy. Yeah, I'm fucking crazy. I was in a yeah. mental health facility, but I'm better now, kids. Yeah. Uh, while I was, uh, Jason and Jordan had their kid while I was inside. That's yeah. how I referred to it because it sounds so fucking cool. I was like, I was inside. Uh, while I was inside, they had the fucking kid, and um, it was, uh, you know, a, a trying time for Jordan, not just because she was giving birth and shit, yeah. but she was also dealing with one of her other children, a.k.a. me, uh, being locked up and stuff like that. So she was between two fucking jobs, like yeah. looking after me and fucking looking after you and looking after fucking her daughter and looking after the kid. She was spread awfully thin. You need to take her on a vacation. I'm sort of ever taking a mini vacation when I go home. You're going to take a mini break holiday, as Tuesday. Bridget Jones would say? Where are you going? Well, Tuesday we're going to go, um, where the fuck are we going? <laughs> Who am I? No, Palm Springs. We're going Wait, to Palm Springs. Uh, you're going crazy now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. recommend no, a great place. I'm going, we're going to Palm Springs Tuesday. Um, Palm Springs? Yeah, it's not, because it's a nice, like, get, we can drive there and it's not too far. 
Uh, we got a house with a pool, and we're gonna just relax and shit. I'm gonna stare at my little boy's fucking penis in the pool. And shit. <laughs> are you no, bringing the, the kids? Are gone. The kids are gone. We're gonna go swimming. You're saying bring her and solo on a vacation. Wait, what? Were you saying that you, <laughs> we are bringing the kids? Yes. But are you saying you think I should bring her on vacation solo? I don't think it's a vacation if she's fucking looking, looking after the kids. It's just being home but in Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> Vacation is like you leave the fucking kids with their mom and you fuck sure. them. All right, so Which begs it. the question, have you gone back to fucking since Lucien has showed up on the scene? Yeah, a few times, a few times. But it took a while, it took a while. Maybe. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> I was like this. Did you come yet? <laughs> Why are you beating her clit? Because her clit. Well, her clit's back here, right? That's back here. Well, I believe we oh. just learned that the clit is right here. Oh, you're right. Fuck, if only I sat in the yeah, next to, to my bedside. Somebody would be fucking speaking American Sign Language uh, next to you at all times. No, 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 because, honestly, because when we, had, she had the baby. So the baby, we literally, she almost had the baby, Lucy, in, in the car ride on the way to the hospital. So she, like, went to, uh, she had contractions, and she was walking around the house. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm like an hour apart, or whatever it was. And then it got closer and closer, but still not too close. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm getting my shit ready to leave for them. We got our bags and I put them in the car and stuff. And she's like, we can leave in a little bit. I'm okay. And then all of a sudden, she's like, we got to go now. We got to go now. I was like, get in the car and shit. And I'm driving. And no lie, she's in the back seat with her leg out. She's like, oh, my God. He's coming out. I'm holding it. She literally had to hold it tight. They brought her upstairs. And she literally was 10 centimeters on the bed. And then she went on the bed. And she, like, rolled over. And no lie, within 14 minutes. Baby was out. Yeah, like looking popped out. I was like, we just gonna um, So, like, because it was such a fast process. Um, you know, was, now that kid's out, we can finally have some sex. Yeah, I was like, get on the way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> She's at 10 centimeters. <laughs> Nine more than I need. <laughs> My balls and dip one into the. <laughs> I had to strap a board to your ass to keep from falling in. <laughs> no, but she, uh, from it happened so fast, and from like the whole situation, she had a little bit of rippage inside. And she ah, was so, yeah, yeah. You should have worn the crown. You were going to say rippage. No, it was a little Let's scary. Let's see what that looks like. Rippage. There was some rippage and tearage. <laughs> but it was scary, honestly, because she was bleeding a bunch, and they were like, we got to bring her upstairs. And I was like, oh, no. Um, so anyway, she so it, it took a little bit longer for her to heal down there. Even I guess she was supposed to wait I don't know, six weeks or something, eight weeks. Eight so, weeks is that the move? Yeah, six, six to, to eight, eight weeks. weeks. And they told her she should wait like ten weeks or even maybe eleven or so. So even after that, though, I would say eleven weeks to twelve weeks, she started being like, "Well, I think I might be ready." And then I was like, "Oh," she was like, Ooh. "And I was like, I'll oh, stop now." And she, and I was like. She was How like, romantic. No, 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 but we started, the, we started playing around a little bit. So no, we haven't, we have, but it's been a few times and gradually it's... So that's you know, why you leave the kids at home, you go to Palm Springs and get buck wild and shit. I don't think she would leave the baby right now. I don't think she would leave the baby, but not for more than like eight hours. It's a little too early. She still has to like feed him with the fucking crew, get his titty to the <laughs> you know, Only you can sexualize the miracle of life. No, but just get the kids in their own hotel room. You guys are in one room, the kids are in the one room. <laughs> well, we have, a, we have a play, we have a thing. We should, we should actually bring some, I don't know, we, I'm down to do this. We're supposed to go to Mexico in a little, in a, like a month or so. What are you going to do that? So, that we're going to, same thing, but we're going to bring uh, the mother-in-law. Or we're gonna bring uh, her godmother, maybe, so that she can hang with the kids. You guys we can help. Have some, like a different place. Well, this is the rich boy and shit. We're bringing help. No, no. <laughs> family, they're coming for free. The <laughs> <laughs> fucking rooms on points. <laughs> <laughs> we got points. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it'll be nice. It'll be nice. This this one's just gonna be us getting out of the house um, and her. She's literally been in the bedroom, kitchen. Um, the baby's room, like she hasn't, and then takes the babies for walks and stuff. But she needs to get out. I agree. Mm -hmm. She needs to get some uh, some fresh air and some bathing by the pool and shit poolside. Um, let me tell you, uh, my we were in the green room before we came out here and stuff, and I was talking to my mom on Facetime. My mom has been in like the hospital for 
the last 10 weeks and she just got sprung like last week and stuff. And there was a period where they, like they pulled my brother and sister aside and they're like, you have to look into hospice. And like my brother and sister told me that they're like, they said we might need to look into hospice. And I was like, we're in a hospital. And they're like, hospice, you fucking idiot. And they had to explain what that was. And I was like, what the fuck? And so, so it was dire at one point. But my mom made a big fucking recovery, amazing grace, we call her shit. So, <laughs> She's not here, so she can't hear that shit. Um, we, uh, so I was down in Florida with her, and uh, the day she got out, the very next day, was the 20th anniversary of my dad dying. So my mom is like, you know, we were raised Catholic, and, and she don't go to church so much anymore, but she still has the faith and whatnot. So she got my dad a, a funeral mass, like where they, say like the motherfucker's name in the mass like you know the priest is like we celebrate this mass in honor of the donald e smith and shit. so i was supposed to go back to jersey for some shows at the smod castle i own a theater movie theater in my hometown i bought it with my friends the theater, is a Thank you. The theater can't hear you so stop wasting your time uh, so before i was meant to go up to jersey earlier but then my brother was like you gotta stick around to go to the funeral mass and shit and uh, I was like, at church? He's like, that's generally where they have the mass. I was like, you sure you want the guy who made dogma going to church? And like, Fucking ceiling might cave in. So I, I, I was like, all right, I, I get it, I'm gonna go. Mom was like, I want you both there. My sister was uh, with my mom for a long time too, but she was uh, out in San Francisco watching her kid graduate from college, so she wasn't gonna be there for the best. So the, the night before we were going to church, um, my mom goes, hey, I just want to remind you that when you go to church, you can't wear your hat in church. And like, I haven't taken off this hat in like 30 years. So <laughs> the idea, I was like, oh my God, you're right. I forgot. Like when I was a kid, you can't wear a fucking hat in church. If you're a lady, you can put shit on your head. But like, dudes have to take their hats off. And go back to the old timey days when people would wear like fucking fedoras and shit like that. And every once in a while, like I remember I popped by Ola PH, which is a church I grew up going to when I was a kid. And I was walking through our hometown and sentimentally, I was like, oh shit, now I'm gonna go inside the church and see what's up. And I walked in and somebody came right over and they're like, you gotta take your fucking hat off and shit. And I was like, first off, don't curse at church. <laughs> and I was like, second off, fuck this place. And I like, the place tells me to take my hat off like I'm a suspect immediately. So that night, man, I couldn't sleep because I was trying to figure out like, am I gonna do it? Do I take my fucking hat off in church? And I talked to my wife, and my wife's like, fuck that organization. She's going, like, they're trying to take away my reproductive fucking rights and my ability to fucking... <laughs> they're trying to tell me what I can and can't do with my body. She's going, fucking, don't let them want to tell you what to do with your fucking hat and shit. And she's like, you wear your fucking hat. And I was like, yeah, I should. She was like, but my mother, I got off the phone, she was like, is that your wife? I was like, yeah. She's like, she's telling you to wear your hat in church? I was like, yeah. She's like, don't listen to your fucking wife. <laughs> your mother. And I was like, fuck, man. So I was caught between a rock and a hard place. So I figured like, well, maybe I can fucking like sit in the back and shit like that. Take my hat off, sit in the back, and then it'll be a compromise and shit. But when we got to church, my mom was like, we're sitting in the front fucking row. And I was like, god damn it, man. So I got in there and I looked around and it was a pretty decent crowd for a fucking Thursday. Like generally when you go to church on Thursday morning, there's like three people there and they're all near death and shit like that. This is a pretty vital crowd, man. It's, it's 75 fucking people of all different ages and shit like that. I was impressed so much so that they didn't have one, two, three fucking communion lines. Like the priest was on one line and then he had two people just whipping wafers on to the side. <laughs> I was impressed by that. I was like, that's it. they fucking pulled more people on a Thursday morning than I could pull on a fucking Thursday night at my movie theater. <laughs> and I know the shit we're showing is way more entertaining. <laughs> so it was a pretty big crowd and I scanned the crowd the whole time before I walked over the threshold and shit. I was in the end, you know, when you first walk into the church and shit, before you get into the church itself, you're in like the lobby. And so I'm looking and I'm eyeballing everyone, seeing if there's anyone that looks remotely like they could or, or would know who the fuck I am and shit. Because if it's somebody who knows, like, oh, that's fucking him, they might pull out the camera and take a fucking picture, put that shit online. This is what he looks like without the hat. Like fucking when kiss, people are always trying to kiss without the makeup on and shit. But I looked at this crowd, not a single one of them was a Jane Sons Bob fan, I'm sure. <laughs> 
So I took my hat off in comfort, man, and sat there. And I'll tell you something. It's been a long time since I was in fucking church for a whole, a whole ass mass and shit. And I thought it was like since the kid got baptized, but my brother was like, no, you went to the funeral mass for dad one year after he died. He was like, you and Jennifer came. I was like, my fucking wife came to this shit? Came in the, I can't believe that I shut the church down after that shit, because she's very mouthy about religion. And whatnot. So I went in, and it was like fucking riding a bike, because I, you know, I was raised in the faith and whatnot, and I used to be an altar boy. So like I know all the tricks and shit. Like at one point when a priest is like raising the fucking Eucharist and he's doing the consecration and transubstantiation term to fucking wafer into the body of Jesus Christ, and he raises it up and lifts it. Says, Take this, do this in memory of me. And in most churches, when he raises it up, bells ring. All of a sudden you hear bells ringing and shit like that. But if you've been backstage like me, you know that that's the altar boy ringing the fucking bells. And shit. So as he raised it up, man, and the bells rang, I was like, I ain't buying it. You know, I fucking knew the tricks. The big difference, though, between fucking when I was like, I was an altar boy for years. For 12 years, I was an altar boy. From the time I was like seven years old, all the way even through high school. Even though I didn't go to a Catholic high school and I stopped going to old PH in eighth grade. I went from first grade to eighth grade in a Catholic school and wore a jumper and a green sweater and the fucking pants and shit like that. I didn't wear a jumper, the girls wore jumpers. Um, <laughs> but um, the whole, even when I like went to Hudson, which was a public school that we both went to and stuff, I'd still go to church on Sundays and shit. And like, if you were in the crowd and the priest came out by himself without an altar boy, because some kids wind up oversleeping and miss the mass and shit, that's when you fucking Clark Kent it, you jump up on fucking the altar, and then you serve without putting on the fucking, the, the gear and whatnot, the cassock and surplus. So I've been an altar boy back in the day for like 12 fucking years, and truly when it was like, like, you know, I was a boy, I was an altar boy. Like, you know, you're fucking Robin some priest Batman. The big difference now is when the priest came in, ain't no altar boy, it was an altar man. Motherfucker on the altar with him looked older than the fucking priest. <laughs> and so I was there with my brother. I was like, "Where's what happened to the altar boys? He goes, man, they don't do that shit. No more. <laughs> Nobody wants to get altar fucked. And I was like, oh shit, you're right. That's the difference, man. Like, fucking, like, they don't trust the priest with the boys no more and shit. So there was an older guy just eyeballing the priest the whole time. Like, I ain't no boy, motherfucker. <laughs> Well, we still fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now it's consensual. <laughs> um, but it was uh, the priest, like generally speaking, if you go to church on a Sunday after like they read the gospels and shit, then the priest gets into the homily. And the homily is where they're like, now what did Jesus mean when he did this shit? Generally, when you go on the weekday, there ain't no homily. Like they read the gospel and then he goes right into fucking, you know, the Eucharist, uh, the, the, the consecration of the Eucharist. But fucking, like, after the gospel was done, he was like, this is the word of the Lord. Everyone's like, thanks be to God. Then everyone sits down, which is what you normally do and shit. And then the priest goes about his business, turning you know, fucking the cookie into Jesus. <laughs> but instead, this motherfucker started a homily on a Thursday. And I looked at my brother, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? It ain't Sunday and shit. But I'll be honest with you, it was pretty quick. Like the dude, he was like, what did Jesus mean when he said this? Well, I'm out, I'm out. I was like, well, that's funny at least. I'll give you Ralph fucking Grandin. Yeah, it's a total Ralph Grandin. Um, very old. What is homily? What is homily? Homily is, I literally just explained it to you. I know if it ain't about your kid's dick, you're not listening. So a homily is when the priest explains what the gospel is. Oh, he explains. So he reads the gospel. That's when he's reading from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John and shit. Yes. Then the homily on Sunday, traditionally, is when he's like, "All right, so you know, Jesus fucking multiplied the loaves and the fishes. Like, okay. what did that mean? And fucking, did that really happen? I mean, they'd never say that in church. They're never like, did that really happen? All they say is that fucking happened. <laughs> this is the word of the Lord. You know. So he got up and he did a brief homily and he explained a few things, which I thought was cool. And then he went into the fucking mass and shit. I was judging the whole time, you know. It's like, I haven't been to church in a long time, but I'm a filmmaker, and fucking, you know, I got critics all the time judging my work and shit. So when I went to church, I was like, I'm gonna judge this motherfucker. <laughs> and he did pretty good, man. Like, I was actually like, oh, because I used to want to be a priest when I was a kid. Like, you know, as an altar boy, as a young altar boy, I was like, I, I would love to be a priest when I grow up. And then I realized, I don't want to be a priest, I just want to be on stage. 
And it's this, you know, this is my fucking church, like right here. And, shit. and I get to fuck, unlike him. <laughs> um, so it was lovely and shit. And when it was all done and whatnot, I put my fuck on. I'm right outside the door, put my hat on and shit. And my mother was so proud of me. She's like, oh, Tiger. She still calls me Tiger. I'm fucking 52. <laughs> She's like, oh, Tiger, I think it was so beautiful that you kept your hat off and shit. And I was like, anything for you, Mom. And so I talked to my wife later on in the day. And the first question she asked me, she was like, you wear your hat in church? She's like, you better have rebelled and wear your hat right in front of that Jesus man. And I was like, do you mean the priest, dear? I was like, no, I didn't wear my hat. She's like, you pussy. <laughs> Uh, but while I was in church, you know, I was there for my dad, uh, but he died 20 years ago and stuff. And it, I, it's, it's a bummer and I miss him, but I'm used to it at this point. Like, even my mom, I was waiting for, like, when the priest was like, you know, Donald Lee Smith. I thought my mom would roll a tear, but it's been 20 years and she's accustomed to the fact that he's gone. While I was there, though, what got me emotionally was, because they talked about the dead in church all the time. I'm like, pray for the dead and shit. And who just died recently in my life? was one of my favorite fucking people in the entire world, man. Shecky, my dog of 18 years, my little miniature doctrine. If you've ever listened to any of the podcasts, Jay and I generally do Jay and Silent Bob get old in front of people and stuff. But like, I started with Smodcast back in 2007. That's when I started podcasting. And Shecky was always like the third person on the podcast. Me and Moj would be talking to Shecky and stuff barking. I'd be like, Shecky, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so Shecky been in my life for 18 fucking years and then she just passed away fairly recently back in, I guess it was uh, April or something like that. And it was kind of heartbreaking because I went away, I went down to Florida to see my mom. And you know, fucking Shecky was plucky as fuck. Even though she was 18, the only way you knew she was old was she had sugar snow. Like she used to be a, a deep brown red color as an yeah. introduction. But then the older she got, she would get white around the face, white around the belly and stuff. But this motherfucker you would never know was 18, man. She was plucky as fuck, ran everywhere and shit like that. Was always so fucking happy to see me. And you know how, like, fucking everybody who owns a pet gives that pet a voice and, like, does the talking for the pet? That's what I realized in this most about Shecky is that, like, our conversations. And she didn't <laughs> talk, I just talked for her. And shit. But, like, when you have a pet, you can project everything you want onto the pet. So, you know, Shecky called me, like, her entire life she would call me the man. That's what I saw when I saw her. And, uh, <laughs> saw her eyes. She'd be like, oh, the man. I love the man. Everything the man does is good. And fucking my wife one day pointed out, she goes, you know you're just talking about yourself. And I was like, that's what the fucking dog is saying. You gotta see it in her eyes and shit. So Shecky loved the man her entire fucking life. And she acted like it. She followed me everywhere and shit like that. She didn't give a fuck about anybody else in my family. She, she tolerated everyone else. But the man was like, oh, the man is wonderful. The man knows exactly what to do. He gives me quality pets and shit like that. So, you know, I would, I would fucking, uh, since I was the man, the Shecky, in my point of view, like didn't call anybody else by their name. So my wife's name is Jennifer, but Shecky never called her Jennifer. To Shecky, uh, Jen was Lady the Man. <laughs> and Harley, who was her technically her sister and shit, because they were raised together. Harley was never Harley. Harley was Little Girl the Man. You were the friend of the man who's obsessed with a baby's dick. <laughs> so, um, so uh, you know, I was leaving to go see my mom, and uh, Shecky was in with uh, my in laws, Byron and Gail, have lived with us forever and stuff. They just finally got their own place and leaving me and Jen alone in this big giant house and shit. And I was like, don't go, you're what holds our marriage together. <laughs> so Shecky was in with Byron and Gail when I was leaving to go see my mom, and I was like, oh my God, I gotta go say goodbye to Shecky. But I was like, you know what, I'm gonna be back in like four days, so I, I, I gotta go, I'm gonna wait for the airport. And I left, and I never got to say goodbye to her. So I was gone for four days, and then the trip wound up being extended because my mom got sicker and sicker and stuff, so I stayed in Florida. And then Harley joined me in Florida to come see my mom and stuff. And then Harley and I both came back to Los Angeles together. And so when we got to LA, I uh, got back to the house and saw Jennifer. And I was like, so fucking excited to see her and shit. I was like, I'm legit happy to see you, man. I can't wait to fuck. And, uh, and my wife was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so she was like, I need you both to sit down. And I was like, what's this all about? Me and Harley sat down. And Jen was like, we lost check. And I was like, where is she? What do you mean lost her? Go find her. And she's like, she, she died. 
and it fucking rocked my world, man, because like this dog was, nothing was wrong with her. It's not like, oh, she'd been sick. You know, I've had other dogs and they've wound down over many yeah, years yeah. and shit. Like I used to have two dogs, two yellow labs named Mulder and Scully, because we were big X-Files fans. And uh, we had a third dog called Cigarette Smoking Man. Mulder uh, <laughs> and Scully, man, like Scully went first, she was the first dog to die, and I had a long time, like two years, she slowly declined. And that's where I learned to become a dog's back legs, because on yep. Yellow Labs, the first thing that happens is the back legs go out and shit. So I used to put a scarf under her back legs and then hoist her up so she could walk on her fronts, and I became her back legs. So two years, we kind of worked like that and shit, and you deal with a lot of shit, but whatever, you, you love the dog. Um, then eventually she lost the power of the front legs, and then she spiraled and shit. And I remember we went to Australia to do Jay and Silent Bob get old over there for a while. When we came back, like, Shecky, uh, the Scully was holding on by a fucking thread. So much so that I was saying to Jen, I was like, I never wanted to have this discussion, but we should really think about having the vet come and, and give her the needle and stuff like that. But Scully, God bless her, that night we went to sleep, when I woke up, she died, she had passed. So I never had to like make that horrible decision about fucking giving, you know, what, what essentially is your child, the needle, you know, fucking putting them down. Boulder held on for a long time. He lived to be about 15 years old and stuff. He lost his back legs, I became his back legs for like three fucking years. And my in-laws who lived with us, they'd had dogs throughout their entire life. So Jennifer, I'd never had dogs until I met Jennifer. So Mulder and Scully were my first dogs. We'd had cats, lots and fucking, lots of cats, and you don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> but a dog, you make a connection with them and shit. And so like, you know, I didn't know how to let go of a dog. Like for me, I'm like, if the tail is wagging, I'm gonna keep this motherfucker alive. If they're eating in the tail's wagon, they wanna live. So my in-laws would be like, that dog's, you're holding on to this dog way long. You should really put that dog down. It's like, you cruel fucking man. Park this in the It's going to keep this motherfucker alive. And so I kept uh, Mulder alive for like 15 years. And then he finally got to a place where like, it was clear like that he, he had something right. was going on. He was suffering. And so that was the first time we had to make a terrible decision to like, all right, let's, we got to put the dog down. We didn't bring the dog to a place. We convinced the vet to come to us and shit. So, you know, he, there was an appointed an appointment schedule and shit like that. We knew when he was coming. So I bought the dog and started a tradition where I bought him like a filet mignon and shit, like a killer fucking meal. Cut him up, fed him fucking filet mignon. These dogs always ate well and shit. But the filet mignon was like the last meal and shit. And then Dr. Kumar would come and the whole family would be there and shit. Everybody got their hand on the dog and whatnot. And one by one, all my relatives fuck off. Like fucking, you know, Jen can't take it, she gets emotional, she leaves. Harley really can't take it, she fucks off. Byron and Gail are like, you should have let this dog die years ago. <laughs> and I'm always like the last one. So they administer two needles, first shot puts him to sleep, and then the second shot stops the heart. So I, you know, I had my hand on him until the whole ride and shit. And then the doctor listens and he's like, he's gone. And then they take him out and stuff. So I have that moment with Mulder. I got to see him all the way to the fucking end and shit. Help him cross the Rainbow Bridge or whatever the fuck. Next dog was Louie, same thing. Kept Louie alive for like 13 years. She didn't make as long as Mulder. Um, but was her back legs for many years and then fucking had to make the call and fucking was there, last one in the room with her and shit like that. Then there was a dog that Jennifer got, a rescue dog named uh, Marty. I call it Mad Martigan. That was the dog's name. Took it from Val Kilmer and fucking Willow and shit. Because they found her tied up by the side of the road. I was like, just like Mad Martigan. <laughs> so Marty also you know, circled the drain. After we got back from Clerks 3, it was clear. Like shooting Clerks 3, it was clear she wasn't going to make it a long time. And she kept her alive for a few more months. Dr. Kumar was always like, man, when I die, I want to come back as one of your fucking dogs. Because <laughs> you won't let these fuckers die, man. <laughs> so I figured with all the experience, like with Shecky, I'd have, you know, time oh, yeah. as she spiraled down. And Shecky was going to be easier. All these other dogs are like 100 fucking pounds and shit like that. Big dogs. Shecky was a, not even a doctor, but a miniature doctor. So I was going to have to be her back legs. I was going to install a handle on her, carry her like a purse and shit. So I was not looking forward to shaking and dying, but I was like, when it's time, she's going to be easy as fuck. I'll be able to hold her and pick her up like fucking a James Bond villain. She'll be in my hands the whole time and shit. But she fucking faked me out, man. Like fucking, I, I went away and fucking she passed. And I, I really, thing is, my wife had gotten these two German shepherds 
like while I was on tour. Was, was there a second where you blamed the wife and she was like, fuck, yes. <laughs> because when Jennifer was just like, I feel you. like she's like, ah, you know, we lost Shecky. Instantly I looked at those two German Shepherds because Jen went to get a German Shepherd puppy and when she adopted them, she meet the mother. And they brought the mom out and shit and Jennifer was like, I gotta take them both. So I was away on the clerk's tour and stuff, and, and uh, she got these two dogs and named these fucking dogs too. And I asked, I had cool dog names my whole fucking lives and dogs Mulder, Scully, Louis Vuitton, Mad Mardigan. She had Shetty, amazing fucking name. She had the temerity to name these two fucking German shepherds Lucky <laughs> and Birdie. I know, right? Like, you're Lucky and Birdie. So disappointing. I was like, you couldn't have thought more than that. She's like, fuck you, you weren't here. <laughs> so fucking Lucky and Birdie are these German Shepherds and one is the mom and one's the puppy and they're both fucking adorable and shit. And they both fell in love with me because I'm Mr. Snack Man and shit. So, you know, uh, we finally, we had to keep Shecky apart from them for like a, uh, about a month uh, when I came back from tour. And so eventually I was like, we gotta fucking introduce them. We gotta start bringing them together, man. We can't fucking keep them separated all the time and shit like that. Like we'd have a, with uh, Mad Mardigan, with Marty and Shecky, we had a series of fucking gates, double pet gates in the house. We called it Checkpoint Charlie and shit. Because we couldn't fucking let them get at each other because they would fight and shit like that. So I was like, we're not doing that again with these fucking German Shepherds and Shecky. I was like, look, all three of them are German bitches, so they gotta learn to get together and shit. I said, we gotta introduce them and get to, they gotta get to know each other and shit. So Shecky hated all other dogs that she wasn't raised with. She loved Scully, Mulder, and fucking Louie, but she never got along with Marty, because Marty came in later. She, those three dogs predated Shecky, so she got along with them. The, this fucking, the, the, when we introduced her to the two German Shepherds, you could tell right away she was like, fuck this. <laughs> and the other two, like the mom, Lucky, was like reticent of Shecky. Like, she's big, she's a big ass German Shepherd, but Shecky was like small and fucking, nah, 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 nah. and so Lucky was like, fuck, it's your world, you know, just like, stayed away. Birdie is a puppy, and Birdie was just like, it's a living doll. So she loved Shecky, but Shecky hated Birdie. So Shecky, like, Birdie would try to play with her and do this shit, and Shecky would fucking ignore her, and then if Birdie got close, Shecky would just bite the shit out of her feet. But since Shecky was so small and Birdie so big, like Birdie didn't seem to mind. She was like, ha, 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 ha. And Shecky was like, I fucking hate you, man. <laughs> so, you know, uh, fucking we couldn't, like, Shecky slept in the bed with us all the time, but those dogs also wanted to sleep in the bed. So when I was gone, when I went to see my mom, I told Jennifer, I was like, you can't fucking have all three dogs in there at the same time. You, you are not equipped to be able to fucking separate them if shit goes down. If Shecky's here, shit will go down. So fucking those dogs, Shecky deserves to be in the bed. She's 18 fucking years old and stuff. Those other two dogs, they're fucking new. So fucking <laughs> they sleep downstairs with your parents. And my wife was like, aye, aye, fucking dog captain. And so when she was like, you know, Shecky, we lost Shecky. First fucking thing I looked at was those two German Shepherds where I was like, something fucking happened. Like she had them all in the room and some shit went down. And I was like, were the dogs involved? And I was like, what are you talking about? No, they were sleeping downstairs with my mom and dad, like you fucking requested and shit like that. And she's going, she was in the bed with me. I was like, tell me exactly what happened. How did Shecky pass? And she's like, we went to bed at night as we always do. She was in the bed with me, she was sleeping. I woke up at 4.30 in the morning because something really smelled. I turned on the light, Shecky was dead, and all of her fluids were just coming out of both ends of her and shit like that. And Jennifer was like, it was truly fucking traumatizing for me. She's going, this has been my dog as well. And fucking like, I woke up and she was dead in the fucking bed. And I was like, uh-huh. Because <laughs> something smelled fucking fishy and shit like that. So I remember talking to Harley, like Jennifer like went in the other room to get tissues because she was crying as she told us the story. Harley's sitting next to me, I was like, I don't buy it. <laughs> and Harley's like, you're out of your fucking mind. There's no way that fucking mom would ever let anything happen to Shecky. Nobody ever wanted to let anything happen to Shecky on their watch because they knew I'd be like, what the fuck happened and shit. So, you know, I, I didn't say anything to Jennifer because clearly she was traumatized by the fact that the dog died in bed with her. I was like, that would have been a fucking privilege. I wish the dog died in bed with me. So I finally, the camera set up and you saw her like painting fucking 
covering up holes from the um, big dogs. <laughs> yes, believe me, I forget if Shecky had been there because she had her credo in the fast. And if you ever listen to Murder Crime podcast, <laughs> that's what they do. They fucking burn the body quick so you can't investigate. And I wanted to see if there were fucking teeth marks yeah, yeah, yeah. like that. She's <laughs> playing <laughs> there and shit. Yeah. So I, I saw, eventually I took the fucking two German shepherds in to see Dr. Kumar to get them their shots and shit. And I hadn't seen Dr. Kumar since Shecky passed. And you know, Dr. Kumar came up and got Shecky and like wrapped her in a fucking blanket. The blanket was like covered in fucking fluid and shit. So we also lost a good blanket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dr. Kumar is the one who picked her up and then he, you know, took her to the Great Nation place. And, uh, so this is the first time I saw Dr. Kumar since Shecky fucking yeah. passed. And so, you know, I brought in the German Shepherds and shit. And then he was like, you come pick him up in an hour. And I was like, Doc, come here. <laughs> he was like, what? And I was like, did you notice anything fishy <laughs> about Shecky's death? And he was like, what do you mean fishy? And I was like, foul play. <laughs> And he was like, are you kidding me? He's like, the dog was 18 years old. I was like, I know, but she showed no sign of fucking wear and tear. And he's just like, how did your father die? I was like, he had a massive heart attack at age 67. He's like, that's what happened to your fucking dog. Sometimes people just go, he goes, Kevin, anything over 14 years with a dog is a gift. And you had this dog until she was 18. He's like, you mean to tell me like you think your wife did something? I was like, I never said my wife. So now I'm thinking these two are fucking colluding with one another. <laughs> see, you see a pair of her panties. <laughs> I was like, are you fucking my wife? Did you kill my dog? <laughs> you fuck my wife or kill my dog, you piece of shit? Meanwhile, Dr. Kamara is like 82 years old. <laughs> <laughs> the cruelty inherent in your laughter. And hey, not just my dog being dead, but the thought of my I'll life being dead. You piece of shit. That's all I'm gonna see now whenever I see Dr. Kumar. but you're fucking crazy. And shit, I was like, I was crazy. I said, but now I'm fucking sane. I went to a place, I came out, they told me I was fucking sane and shit. I was like, I don't think I'm crazy. I was like, that dog was never sick a day in her life. He goes, that's not true. He said, you would bring me the dog when she was sick all the time. I was like, I know, but not lately and shit. I was like, are you sure those two German shepherds didn't have something to do with this? And he was like, they're German shepherds, not Germans. <laughs> So he fucking put me off that dog yeah. shit. And I came home and I, you know, I brought the dogs home and I saw Jennifer and I was like, well, Dr. Kumar has me convinced that like nothing bad. There was no foul play to share with me. This is the first time I'd introduced that notion to my wife. And she was like, what do you mean foul play with Shecky? I was like, I'll be honest with you. I thought maybe something fishy was going on with Shecky. And she was like, well, what do you mean? Like then who would have been involved? And I was like, well. <laughs> whoever was with Shecky when she died. And she was like, have you thought this whole time that I was responsible for Shecky's death? She was like, it was my dog too, Kevin. And the cry, you know, she cried, but the tears felt like crocodile tears. <laughs> didn't seem as fucking sincere as when I would cry about Shecky. But I miss her like a fucking pain, I'll be honest with you, man. Like something, uh, something died in me when that dog went away. She was like one of my closest fucking confidants. And I, you know, my wife's like, she wasn't your close fucking confidant. She was a dog and you just gave her a voice. And the voice was all about how cool you are. <laughs> She's like, so that's all you miss is you saying how cool you are through the fucking dog. And I was like, I, that dog didn't just say it. I saw it in her eyes. I miss her like fucking crazy, man. Now you got two dogs who are getting old as well. Oh yeah. Jersey, yeah, Jersey just turned 16. Yeah. Uh, she's a pug beagle. She's fucking next. And then, uh, Your wife's gonna be fucking the vet. How about that? <laughs> and then we have Jax, who's a, a, a Chihuahua Corgi, and he's, uh, I think, 14. So, or 13 or 14. We've That's all vicious. He needs to die. <laughs> But it's true that What's gonna happen though? Like now you got kids. Like my, by the time I lost Shecky, my kid was all grown up. 
You got like an eight year old and a fucking less than one year old and shit. Are you gonna give a shit when the dogs die? I'm, no, I will, I will definitely. I definitely will. I don't know. I think Logan will be sad about Jack's jersey. She's gonna be a little upset about. But Logan just waiting. She's like, I want a cat. <laughs> she's the one, she's like, I'm gonna kill one of these yeah. fucks so I can get to the cat that I've dreamed about my whole life. She really is just like, more like, we can't get a cat until we get the dogs or not. Like, but I don't know, we don't, I don't know if we're gonna get another pet. We'll see. I, I don't know if I can, again, it'll be weird because Jersey's been around for so long. Again, the same with Shecky too, like 16 years is a long time, so. Um, but, and she's starting to like, she runs around and so is Jax, like you said, they're, they're not as plucky as Jackie, but they run around, oh, they run around and stuff, but I do notice when, when First time with the microphone, everybody. I've been doing the podcast for fucking 13 years. <laughs> I got excited, uh, I mean, they get excited still uh, and run around and stuff like that. But anyway, you know, sorry, I was zoning out listening to you talk for so long. <laughs> Number one, that's funny. Number two, fuck you. <coughs> um, all right, kids, I think we're just about ready to get the show started. Yeah. How many people have ever heard the podcast, Jane, Tom, Bob, get old? Put your hands together. Yeah. Very lovely. How many people have never seen or heard the podcast, Jane, Tom, Bob, get old? Put your hands together. Yeah. A handful of people who are like, why is he talking at all? <laughs> uh, we don't play Jane, Silent Bob in the podcast, obviously. Those characters are much funnier than us. Uh, what we do is we sit around for the last, oh shit, 13, I think it's going on 14 years we've been doing this podcast. Um, yeah, because I think we started in 2009, it's 2023. I think we've been doing this shit for 14 fucking years now. It started as an intervention podcast back when Jason was fucking had a hard time with the drugs and the alcohol and shit like that. And the idea was like, we do this show and it's a way to keep him on the straight and fucking narrow and stuff. Because, you know, rather than just a few people, a handful of us, knowing that he was, uh, you know, knee deep in fucking addiction and whatnot, and being able to fucking ride him like a police officer and shit. If we did the show, then everyone he meets could be like, how long you been clean and sober and shit like that. So when we started the show 14 years ago, it was mostly about that. Um, it, it's, you know, you, you should never count your chickens and shit, but it's been a damn fucking minute since addiction has been an issue for Jason. For example, do you know how long you've been in Yes, uh, hey, July 2nd will be 13 years. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Now, the great irony through most of the years of the podcast uh, has been like, you know, it's an intervention podcast where it's like, don't do fucking drugs. And I was high as a kite the whole fucking time. <laughs> but after I, once I went into the, the nut house when I was in Sierra Tucson and shit, they don't let you smoke weed there, go figure. So I couldn't smoke weed for the time I was in there and I was in there for a month. And when I got out, I didn't go in there to be like, I don't want to smoke weed anymore. I'm, I'm addicted to weed. But when I got out, it had been a month since I'd smoked fucking weed. So I was like, well, let me see how far I could take this. You know, because it's part of like the experience of, of why I kind of lost my mind was, you know, I'd become numb as fuck. I used to wake up, smoke weed, smoke weed all day, and then fucking go to sleep, smoke weed, go to sleep, sleep for four hours, wake up, smoke again. So there was never a period where THC and lots of it wasn't racing through my system. So I was like, well, like I did 15 years of my career never smoking from the beginning until 15 years in, from Clerks until Zach and Mary make a porno. I never smoked weed. Then I worked with Seth Rogen and all I did was smoke weed. <laughs> so for the next 15 years, I smoked fucking weed. So, you know, I was like, let me see if I can try it without. I'd like to not be numb. I'd like to be crisp. I'd like to be fucking present. So I'm coming up on Tuesday. Like, you know, this is, I'm certainly holds no candle to your 13 years. But as of Tuesday, it will be 20 weeks since I've smoked weed. Yeah. Yeah, now, don't applaud that. Life sucks. <laughs> it's very colorless not smoking weed and shit. But it is very crisp and I am very fucking present and shit. But now we're finally on the same fucking page, you and I. It's interesting. I, again, it's interesting how it was like all about me smoking and this and that. And then after a heart attack, we went vegan. 
and now like the weed and stuff, it's been, a, it's been like a Buzz and Buddy situation. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I to sing Do you know what Buzz and Buddies are? No, but I was thinking of the, the show and I wanted to sing it, but I forgot the song. Remember the Violet song? Yeah, I don't Billy care King. what you say anymore. Life. Beep, beep, beep. I love how you don't know fucking lyrics, so you're just like, I don't get it. No, now I know my life. You're coming home tonight. Leave me alone, dude. But for the last, uh, the whole time we've been doing this podcast, like, I was always stoned. This is the very first time we've done Jane's Song, Bob Get Old, that I've not been high. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think you're very funny. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, man. Normally I sit here and fucking, you know, like just I'm sailing along, numb as fuck and whatnot. But it's an interesting experience being crisp as fuck. I feel like I talk more. Oh, when I was like, you talk. I'm now you forget to pass the ball because you're not smoking and shit. Before you'd be like, Wait, I hit a pothole. What'd you say? <laughs> That's right, I haven't hit a fucking pothole. I'd forget shit and be like, oh, I hit a pothole. But I haven't hit a fucking pothole yet. It's okay. Except for the fact that when we came up on stage, we have a, we forgot, we have a guest. Yes. Um, a funnier guest than me, and that's why you're realizing. Yes. Yeah, he's replacing me. I can Fuck! <laughs> we, um, here when you're a Comic-Con, of course, you always meet a bunch of people and stuff. You meet people that uh, you've seen their work and you're a fan of their work and stuff like that. So uh, we were talking to this cat in the green room, and uh, he was like, I'm gonna come watch your show. And I was like, don't watch the show, it's way more fun to fucking be in the show. <laughs> uh, and he's an actor, and I, you know, I can point to a zillion things he's been in, but the moment he steps on stage, you're gonna be like, that fucking guy. And that's who it is, it's that fucking guy, three names. But he does have three names in real life. Welcome to the stage, Paul Walter Hauser. Baby. Yeah! yeah. Thank you, man. It's so good to see you guys. Thank you for coming out. This is awesome. Yeah. This is so cool. Now, the whole time you were back there, were you like, they totally forgot me? <laughs> no, I mean, it, it passed through my, my mind for sure, yeah. But I, but I was, I'm, I'm just happy to be here, man. Like, this is, this is a big deal for me, too. I love, like, Mall Rats and, uh, Ma dude, Mall Rats is such a big movie for me, um, and, and everything you guys did early on, especially that DIY, like, that made me want to be a director and, like, make movies with my friends, you know? Tell these folks, uh, some shit that you've been in. Oh, shit. Uh, I played a racist asshole in Black Klansman for Spike Lee. Uh, I play a wannabe ninja in, uh, Cobra Kai. Yeah. <laughs> I just played a serial killer in Blackbird with Taryn Edgerton. And, uh, yeah, I just play a bunch of really well-adjusted people. <laughs> My favorite show he's been in is the show Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah, it was so yeah. good. Yeah, it was such a good show. It was show. an MMA drama. Yeah. yeah. When Way they pitched better. that to me, I was like, I didn't think it was a real show. Okay. They said to me, they're like, we have an audition for you, and I'm all excited because I'm broke as shit. And, uh... They go, it's an MMA drama at DirecTV starring Nick Jonas. I said, that sounds like a Mad Lib. That doesn't sound like a real show to me. Uh, but lo and behold, that was the show that allowed me to uh, quit my day job. I signed on for two episodes and then I just went full Brando, even though I had like three lines. And they kept writing for me and I got to quit my uh, serving job. When you say MMA drama is like in the world of mixed martial arts? Yes, that is the backdrop for all of the twists and turns between Frank Grillo and his two sons. Oh, so Frank Grillo plays the MMA guy. The Jonas kid don't play the MMA guy. He no, does. He did. He yeah. played one of them. And yeah, so did Jonathan Tucker, brilliant actor. Uh, who's been in like Hannibal and Justified, a bunch of stuff. We don't have to talk about Charlie's. <laughs> let's, let's keep this. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop on this. The MMA kid is played by one of the Jonas brothers? And he does a really good job, man. He really, really showed up. I, I have Is he big? Has he got guns and shit? Um, he, yeah, he like got in shape for real, for real. Which Jonas is he? Is he the pretty one? He's the one who's married to, uh... It's Nick. 
I don't think he still knows. That doesn't Leon? help me at all. Yeah, that's that's right. I just don't know their first names. I just know their last names and their brother. <laughs> yeah. He had some successful <laughs> solo career. He's yeah, he was like the main one. So, all right, that, that one I do know. He was on uh, Saturday Night Live, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah that he, uh, uh, that's how I know most fucking people, like when they host Saturday Night Live. That's how I judge a motherfucker, man. Like, I don't care what they've done in life and shit. I can hate you as a fucking performer. But if you host Saturday Night Live and you're fucking good, yeah. you jump in my stuff. Oh yeah, Peter Sarsgaard and uh, John Malkovich from like that for me. I saw them host SNL and I was like, dude, these guys are really funny. Yeah. Have you met Buscemi? Yes. I Buscemi agree. hosted in 98 and he slaughtered it. it He's amazing. amazing. But he don't, fucking, he don't need to host Saturday Night Live to be a legend. He's always been fucking He just, did. he was after Reservoir Dogs. Very true. Even before that, son. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wait for Reservoir Dogs. What about Barton and Fink? Shit like that. Oh, that was like six months prior. Don't act like this is <laughs> some huge gap in duration. What is it like? By the way, you... thanks for bringing me up during this moment. I uh, I really missed out on baby penises, <laughs> church, dead pets. There was a lot of ground to cover. I, I, we cover a lot of ground. Thanks for getting it out before I got up here. <laughs> Tell these folks what it's like to be, uh, uh, let's call it a working actor, because you work a lot. Man. Yeah, careful. Let's find a nice way to say it. Yes. <laughs> I, um, you go, what's it like renting a house the rest of your life? No, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, no, growing up, man, I, I don't know about you guys, but like my whole thing, watching TV and movies and stuff, even stuff like a podcast, I, I get more geeked up about people like Joe LaTrulio, Peter Sarsgaard, Sam Rockwell, like, I, I, character actor. Yeah, I don't, I don't nerd out as hard uh, over the really, really famous people. So I just assumed, based on how I looked and acted, that I would be like that, and uh, and it's fun. Uh, but I've been so spoiled. That's what freaks me out. Because like I'm just like happy to be working, and then you get uh, Clint Eastwood asks you to play Richard Jewell, and then. That's why you were fucking Rich, Richard Jewell, oh, yeah. the title character. Yeah. What's it like to be directed by Clint Eastwood? That's gnarly. That's gnarly. He's um he's really like he's really like chill and funny and and uh, like he'll make fun of himself, which a lot of folks don't when they're at that point in their life. And uh, and I really liked him, man. I have a lot of good memories. I have this memory. I also am sober now. I have a year and eight months on the 24th. <laughs> yeah. Who knew that you couldn't lead a good life taking 17 rips from a bowl and then buying concert tickets and forgetting about it <laughs> while spending a hundred- Jonas Brothers concert tickets? <laughs> no, I got those for free, okay. <laughs> while well, spending $130 on Postmates and then forgetting you ordered it. And finding McDonald's at your doorstep the next morning. Who knew that, who knew that isn't sustainable? You weren't a very good stoner then. I know. There was a lot of uh, mishaps. Uh, Clint Eastwood's the man. I loved working with him. And like him and Spike Lee had some beef back in the day. Like they didn't see eye to eye on a number of things. And uh, I at one point had Clint asking me what Spike Lee like. I'm a fan. And Clint's like, I love Black Clans. We do the right thing. Malcolm X. And so I text Spike, and I'm like, yo, Eastwood's talking about you, and he's saying really lovely things. Spike hits me back with a big block text, and is like, tell him I'm a fan, he's a legend, I would love to sit down and talk film with him. So I'm like literally the between guy, <laughs> getting Spike and Clint to squash their beef and like say nice shit to each other. But it was like, that's one of those gnarly moments where you're like, what the hell is my life, man? <laughs> I worked at a bowling alley 12 months ago. It's crazy. Uh, Matt, Matt Damon works with Clint Eastwood. And he said I just worked with Matt. On what? We did a movie called Instigators. Me, Matt, Casey, yeah. Affleck, uh, Ben produced, and it's at Apple. Doug Lyman directed it. It's like a crime film. Doug Lyman, the swingers, Doug Lyman? Yeah. Um, how fucked up? We've all worked with Matt Damon. Anybody else worked with Matt Damon? <laughs> I know Jimmy Kimmel is fucking him, right? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Matt Damon? Uh, Damon said that when he worked with Clint Eastwood, he don't say action. No, he says, uh, go ahead. And he, he does it real gently, like, like the, you, the floor is yours. And instead of yelling cut, because back in the day when Clint did all those westerns, 
uh, like uh, Rawhide and you know the Sergio Sergio Leone films. You yell cut, it can spook the horses and they can run off. So at the end of a take, he'll just go. Oh, that's, a, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of charming and cool, but you also wonder in your insecure actor brain, you're like, is there a reason he's saying it like that? <laughs> oh no, his face is usually kind of splinted that way. That's okay. <laughs> Same with De Niro. Every time De Niro speaks, it looks like he might be pissed, you know? Like, <laughs> is this calamari? And you're like, yes, Mr. De Niro, you ordered the calamari. No, I was just asking, is it the calibre? <laughs> Terrifying. Everyone listening is like, we don't know if that was a good impression of De Niro. <laughs> we can't see this shit, genius. <laughs> did you work with him? De with him? De Niro? De Niro? No, but I did go up to him at the SAG Awards. Uh, somebody was sick in the Itania cast and couldn't make it to the SAG Awards, so they're like, Paul, do you want to go? And I said, yes, I do want to be in that room full of, uh, and basically what you're doing out there, I was doing at the SAG Awards. Um, and so I, I, I'm going around like meeting people and it's super fun. I saw Bradley Whitford walk by and I just went, Billy Madison, and he goes, hey man. Like, really, like, he, did not, he did not like that I brought up Billy I'm Madison. Sure he's like, all, of all the shit you could say, <laughs> Billy Madison. I don't care, I don't care, I love that movie, and I think he's so funny. Um, but then I saw De Niro sitting alone, and I'm like, he probably really values being alone whenever possible, but nobody's talking to him, and there's like a two minute commercial break, so I run over there and I just go, hey man, just wanted to say, King of Comedy is one of my favorite films, and it's such an honor to see you and meet you, just want to shake your hand. And he, and he was just a nice little mensch, just looked up at me and went, huh? <laughs> Maybe he was a stroke, he was just yeah. an ass. <laughs> I was just about to say, my De Niro is perpetually in a state of contracting Bell's palsy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's fair to do. <coughs> um, well, fucking, um, I, I saw this guy, we went to, um, this is going back to like 19... Early 98 and shit, we were working on making this movie Dogma, and we were trying to cast it, and uh, we were sent to um, this fashion show. It was a, a Tom Ford fashion show, the Benefit AIDS. And so we were meant to uh, try to convince... Um, what Sorry, you said Tom Ford fashion show, the Benefit AIDS? Yes. So this was in, like, what, Tulsa, Indianapolis? Yes. <laughs> it was in Los Angeles. Um, oh, funny joke. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I, I had no but if you're going to take the mic, say some funny fucking shit. No, you're Paul. right. No, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, so we are heard I'm sorry. Keep going. Some good acting right there, man. I uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> I just watch hours of Leo talking. So go ahead. So Tom Ford Fashion Show. We're at the Tom Ford Fashion Show, and I was meant to convince Jillian Anderson to be the lead in Dogma. And she wasn't happy. But while we were there, there's a bunch of fucking famous people. There, and I brought him. And they, were like, <laughs> they were like, do you have tuxes? And we were like, no. And we're like, well, you gotta get tuxedos. So we went to like a place where you rent prom tuxedos. And we rented some tuxedos and shit, and we went. And this is before the age of the cell phone. So there was no cell phone camera. But fucking Peter Parker here brought like a, a real ass camera. And I do this shit with, and it has a flash. And I was like, what's this all about? He's like, there's big fucking famous people there. I was like, you're a fucking famous people. He's like, I don't give a shit, I'm taking pictures. So. You can find these pictures online, man. They're like the old VSQ website. I used to put them up and shit. There's a fucking photo of like across the catwalk. Because we had fucking good seats. Like I'm right in front of the catwalk. And there's, you know, the catwalk looks like this. We're on one side. On the other side of it is Tom Hanks, his wife Rita Wilson, and some other famous fuckers on either side. I think Demi Moore or something like that. And so he was a All high ranking members of the Illuminati. <laughs> They're planning the future. 
And so fucking me and Muse are sitting there and Muse is like, I want to take a picture of fucking Tom Hanks. And I was like, well, don't do it in this fucking room, man. Like, that'd be weird. And he's like, there's fucking cameras everywhere. He'll never know. <laughs> and I was like, all right, there's logic there. So I was like, fair enough, fair enough. And shit. So I have these two pictures. You can see it, it exists. They're online. This one picture is Tom Hanks engaged in deep and animated conversation with his wife and with fucking Demi Moore and shit like that. Then the very next picture is like, if that's the camera, they're all going. <laughs> because he had the biggest fucking flash of his camera. So he was trying to take it on the down low, he was keeping it down here and shit, and he fucking paffed it went off at a time when nobody was on the catwalk and shit, and they all fucking turned and looked like this, like dogs in the headlights and shit.